2012 five-door Volkswagen GTI in candy white paint with a direct shift gearbox and front wheel drive. The car comes standard with a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine producing about 200 horsepower and 205 foot-pounds of torque. Brief history lesson. In 1975 at the Frankfurt Auto Show, Volkswagen released the original Mark I GTI. The idea behind the car was to take a normal everyday economy car and give it a sporty performance package. That way you could have practicality and performance in the same car. Thus, the hot hatchback segment was born. The group of cars called hot hatchbacks are very popular in Europe, not so much here in the United States. So why did I choose a GTI? Well, going from my BMW 328, I really wanted to stay in the German family because I think they make the best cars, but that's a different discussion. And I've always thought that hot hatchbacks are just cool. So in my mind, there were three options. In America, you've got the Volkswagen GTI, the Mazda Speed 3, and the Ford Focus ST, which are all sort of in the same bracket. Now, it should be said that both of those cars come with quite a bit more horsepower from the factory than this car does. In stock form, they would leave this car behind. However, if you throw a few performance mods at it, the story changes. My car has performance mods from APR. As the car sits right now, it has an APR Stage 2 performance tune on it, a cold air intake from APR, as well as their performance downpipe. All told, that 200 horsepower number from the factory has grown to 275, and the torque has gone from 205, 210 to 330. Needless to say, this car is no slouch and surprises almost everyone at lights. What are some things I like about this car? Well, the first thing that I have to mention is this direct shift gearbox. Now, I know it's not a manual. I wish it was sometimes. I love stick shift cars. I think that it is an incredibly intimate experience shifting gears. I think that the manual gearbox going away is a sad thing and I think that we should do everything we can to preserve them. However, the gearbox that's a stick in this car isn't that great. It's got a really long throw. I've driven them. The clutch is kind of spongy. I wasn't a huge fan. How does the DSG gearbox work? Well, basically, I have two clutches, one clutch having gears 1, 3, and 5, and the other clutch having gears 2, 4, and 6. What this allows me to do is shift incredibly quickly, because the brain of the car can tell based on the throttle mapping or the position of the brake pedal which gear to pre-select. So say I'm going down the street and I'm in third gear and I put my foot down and I start accelerating. If I'm in automatic mode or manual, the car will know that I'm gonna probably shift into fourth gear. So it's already got fourth gear ready. As soon as I pull the paddle or the car decides to shift, I will immediately have that gear in 80 milliseconds. Vice versa, if I decide I need to slow down, the car registers that my foot is depressing the brake pedal or the car is engine braking because I don't have my foot on the throttle and it will pre-select second gear. If I was in a drag race with a car that has comparable power, front wheel drive and a stick shift, Basically, every time that the stick shift car changes gears, I will gain on them because I am not having to do that. The car is already pre-selecting the gear while they have to select it themselves. Another thing I love about this car and which made me go the Volkswagen GTI route rather than the Mazda or the Ford was the interior. The quality on this car is phenomenal and that's just something you get with German cars. I am in love with the plaid seats on this car. I get a lot of questions about it. I decided I didn't want a leather interior and I wanted cloth just for these seats. And the reason is, 
what other cars can you get with a plaid interior? Name one that you can get other than the GTI from the factory, and I will give you a dollar. This car, as I stated when I was talking about the hot hatch history, is hugely practical. I went on a trip up to North Carolina with my buddies Kenny and Ryan, and we went camping. They slept in an old tent while I slept in the back of this car. I put the back seats down, I was able to stick my feet through here, lay down flat. It was really comfortable. Now, most people aren't going to be sleeping in their cars, but if you have some stuff that you need to transport, this car can easily fit an ottoman or a TV or a bunch of dogs. It could probably fit a small elephant. Let's talk about that power because this car has quite a lot of it. I just gotta say, and I know this is my car, and I'm trying to give a really unbiased, informative review, but the best part about this thing is sticking it in manual and dropping gears and just hitting boost. I mean, it is just, it gets you into trouble though, how fast you get in this car. Goodness me. The steering on this car is also a major highlight for me. In my BMW, I had a ton of feel, but it was really heavy, especially at low speed. This car has the perfect balance of giving me feedback while also not having the steering be too heavy. If I had to say something that I didn't like about this car, it would have to be the lack of personality. It's a very fun car. I love driving it. I can't stop driving it, quite frankly, but it it doesn't have any sort of giggle factor. There is a remedy for this seriousness, however, and that is with this button down here that says traction control off. Being a front wheel drive car with all that power and torque, this car likes to spin tires if the traction control is not off, and when it does, it comes alive. In the instruction manual for launch control, there's all these warnings about doing a launch, and none of them are mechanical worries at all. You can do it all day if you wanted to. But the, what it always tells you in the book is don't alarm people around you or don't annoy people around you or you might frighten people around you because when this thing gets going in first gear with no traction on, it just spins and spins and spins and there's smoke and there's loud screeching and it's crazy and you're like, where is that coming from? It's coming from the little hatchback right in front of me. This car breaks molds and goes against expectations, especially with the aftermarket support that it has. Most people do not expect this thing to leave at lights. Most people don't expect it to burn rubber. Most people don't expect it to be able to fit as many people and things as it can. I have driven very tall people in the back seat many a time, and they will all attest to the fact that the space is very surprising considering the size of this car. Well guys, this has been my review of my 2012 Volkswagen GTI. I've had a great time doing it. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll get back to you. I love talking about my car. I love talking about anything that you guys want to talk about. Don't forget to like the video if you did, share it if you want to show it, and subscribe if you want more of this content. It's been fun guys. I'm T-Dub, signing off.